Hey guys, this is Memorage92, Stay Gigachin and Spam Noted. Today in this video, I'm gonna cover the new PTR Pinnacle Clavier Breakdown. Then let's get started. So first of all, let's talk about the new identity buff. The new buff gives for blue stance 20% attack speed and 25% damage. Red stance it gives 20% movement speed and 60% crit damage. Also, you can get the full buff of these if you swap by having at least one gauge. So right here, I have at least one gauge right here. And if I swap it to red stance, then I get a buff, which says I get 20% movement speed and 60% crit damage, which is the full buff. If I swap it once again by not having any gauge, then I literally get none of the buff right here. Also, if you see right here, whenever you swap your stance, you lose one gauge like this. Okay, let's go over to the new Pinnacle class engraving. So what this does is that Along with your current stance buff, it gives you 100% amount of the opposite side of the stance buff as well. So this shortly means that uh, you get all of these buff on every stance. So blue stance, you get some of all these four buff like this. And red stance, you get the same amount as well. Literally, you get equal amount of the buff on both of the stance. Okay, let me go over to the gears and stats. For the gear, you go Entropy. For the stats, you go Full, Spec, and Sub, Crit. Entropy set will become most likely the meta. And uh, the reason is this. Think about the live server Entropy. What's the problem? The problem is never the damage. The problem is the practicality of the Entropy. So there are two problems, right? Number one, long animations on red skills. And number two, um, low crit rate on the red skills as well. These problems all derives from the bipolarized, you know, identity, right? Which they fixed it in the PTR. Now you get equalized amount of the uh, buff, as I mentioned previously. So since Entropy is stronger, like way stronger than any other build, and they lowered the huddle, like the obstacle of, uh, you know, doing the potential in the PTR, there is no reason not to run Entropy. That is what's happening. SPAC in the PTR got reworked. It no longer increases the efficiency of the identity buff. Now it increases the raw damage of the red skills only. It does not increase the blue skills. This is a very good change because when you compare it with the live server, in the live server it increases efficiency of the identity buff. So you get tons of wasted attack speed, movement speed, and even crit damage, right? But in the PTR, since it increases flat damage of the red skills, uh, now you do tons of damage uh, with all the four red skills. So if I talk about the overall crit rate, you get around 22% from the crit substat. Level 3 Entropy gives you 22%. If it's level 2, then you get 20%, right? Back attack, 10%. Adrenaline level 1, 5%. And Shackling Blue Dragon gives you 20%. I'll talk about this part later in the skill section. But Shackling Blue Dragon now gives only to yourself 20% crit rate. So that's around 80%. In the live server, you only get like 60 to 65% crit rate for the red stance, right? But in PTR, since it gives you around 80%, you can run the damage tripod over guaranteed crit on the Sorrowful Pounce and Red Dragon Horn this one over this with 80%, which is pretty high. This time, let me show you how short the red skills animation are thanks to the 20% attack speed on the red stance. So use synergy skill. So that's how fast it is. So it took like less than five seconds to you know run all the four red skills. And also not only the offensive part, uh, when it comes to like survivability, by not having any of the swiftness, you still get 20% of movement speed every time, right? Thanks to the new, you know, identity buff. So uh, this is a very good change that I can say. You will find this out later in the rotation section. Pinnacle Glavier is no longer a consistent DPS class. It's now a bursting class, which the DPS is heavily condensed in the red skills. Let's go over to the engraving. For the engraving, you go Grudge, Curse Doll, Ambush Master, Raid Captain, Pinnacle, and Adrenaline Level 1. So for these three, Grudge, Ambush Master, Pinnacle, there's no doubt, right? 
for these two, Curse Law and Rage Captain, there's there might be so many questions about this, right? Like, how about running Adrenaline Level 3? How about Kim Blunt? How about All Out Attack? How about Mass Increase kind of stuff, right? So let me try to, you know, uh, answer that based on my experiment. Okay, here I go. So, first of all, Mass Increase. Mass Increase increases 18% attack, but reduces 10% attack speed. The max attack speed of this build is around 130 Ish with the Swamp of Yearning because you get 120 from the uh, identity and 10% uh, from the support, right? Since this build is a back attack and also in KR, uh, at the end game of KR, bursting is the meta, like fitting everything out in Atrophin and the Bard buff, like the supporter's buff. Uh, in that kind of meta, as a back attacker, reducing attack speed, unless it's already capped over 140, is not recommended. Yeah, it's, it, it will actually drop your DPS. If this is not a thing in the West, then I guess you can run the mass increase over Curse Doll. Clear, right? All right, next one is Kim Blunt. Kim Blunt in this build, um, the crit damage, by the way, um, you get 60% from the identity buff, right? And you get 65% if you run Entropy level 3. So that's 325%. And the crit rate is 80%, right? There's a Kim Blunt table where you can easily find out if you Google, and based on that table, it only increased 12% of damage, which is pretty bad. Yeah, that's why like Kim Blunt is not even better than like Crystal or Rage Captain. By the way, Rage Captain does not show full efficiency in this build. Like it doesn't increase 18%, rather it's 15% on my build, 15. But 15 is better than 12 for, for sure, right? Yeah. And next one is all out attack. So the possible build that we came up that can actually, you know, run all out attack is five skills that are holding skill. Uh, one is this one, four headed dragon. Two is the red dragon horn. This one is not a holding skill, by the way. It's a charging skill. So don't get confused. The other one is half moon slash. You can, you know, change it into a holding skill, right? And another skill is that uh, there's a skill that got reworked uh, called blue dragon claw. This one right here. This one also have a holding tripod right here. And we tried this as well. So that's four skills uh, in the skill set, right? And plus the second awakening. So that's five in total. We tried it, but it did significantly less damage than the current one that I'm showing. Yeah, so all out attack, like I don't recommend it. And it's pretty obvious the reason why all out attack is not doing that much damage because uh, as I told you, the spec increases raw damage of all the red skills now. So Unless the engraving benefits all four DPS red skill, uh, it's not gonna do that much damage. All out attack does not benefit thrust of destruction and star for pounds. And the last one is how about running adrenaline level three over like curse doll, right? You already have 80% crit rate with level one. So level three makes you 90%. Uh, it doesn't need to be that much high. Like uh, also like you're decreasing the attack since you're not you're going over the adrenaline level three over curse doll. So I don't recommend it. It actually drops the, the the DPS potential, and also you have to think about the possibility of getting a crit party synergy uh, in the raid. Okay, now the skills. Spiraling spear. Uh, you wanna go for this new tripod right here. This is a party synergy of the Glaver. It's new, by the way. It says it increases the damage upon crit by eight percent. Uh, for seven seconds to your party mates, including yourself. So this does not mean crit damage 8% it means damage upon crit so if a class crits then you get 8% damage more if it doesn't crit you get zero damage that's what it is and a lot of you know um party mates who have who already have high crit will love this crit yeah for the rune you run a uh, quick recharge i know that you guys do not have the access to the legendary quick recharge in that case just reuse the the purple one yeah for the next skill, four headed dragon. Um, this one you go three, one, two. And by the way, this tripod right here got uh, changed. It does not do bleed damage anymore. Uh, it only does like flat damage increase. For the rune, you run gale wind. For the thrust of destruction, you go three, two, and one. You can see that this tripod right here was a used to be a quick preparation, but it got deleted. So you run this one that increases your attack speed since you're not in a full attack speed. For the rune, Gale Wind. For the Starfall Pounce, you run 1, 1, 2. 
for this skill right here that used to be a quick preparation, it got changed into something that does more damage uh, to a non-boss, you know, um, monsters, which is trash, right? So you go for this one right here, which says uh, it increases the stagger of the starful counts. For the rune, Gale Wind. This one right here, Red Dragon Horn, you go 1, 1, and 1. As you can see, quick preparation on this tripod got changed into something that is not good. Uh, incoming damage reduction uh, during the animation. That's not good, right? So you run this one that increases the the animation speed. Yeah. And for the rune, you run Gilwind. By the way, the perfect zone of the red dragon horn got you know increased. The size of the box got increased. So even if you run this one that increases the speed, you will not have a problem of uh, fitting the box out like this. Yeah. And as you can tell, all three skills, Thrust of Destruction, Starfall Pounce, and uh, Red Dragon Horn, the quick preparation disappeared. All of them. That's why the cooldown of the red skills will be longer than live server. But in exchange of that, they got a lot of damage increase. That's why uh, this is another reason why Glaver, Pinnacle Glaver is no longer a consistent cla class, but rather a bursting class that have to burst everything and then wait for some, you know, several seconds, yeah, to come back. All right. Next one, Half Moon Slash. Uh, you go one, three, and two. You can also run this one, the Chasing Slash, which is a holding skill. Uh, for the rune, bleed rune. Raging Dragon Slash, 3, 1, and 2. This one, I'm running quick recharge. You can see that I'm running 2 quick recharge, but you don't have, you guys don't have 2, right? So in this case, uh, you can just put something like Gale Wind, like, you know, blue, blue Gale Wind on this uh, spot. Next one, uh, Flash Kick, you go this one, that increases the movement, you know, movement distance. And the Vault Kick, you go for the same one. And the last one is Shackling Blue Dragon. So Shackling Blue Dragon, uh, regardless of the tripod, now it has an inbuilt, you know, uh, effect. Uh, it increases your crit rate by 20% for six seconds. It only increases yours. Yeah. And for if you see the tripod, this is the same new tripod that was here in the Spiraling Spear, but it has a higher duration. This one is 16 seconds duration, and a uh, Spiraling Spear was seven seconds, right? So by using these two skills, you can infinitely, you know, you can have the uptime as infinite for your party mate, which is very good. Yeah, even without any swiftness. So um, the second tripod, this one, and third tripod got a rework. The quick preparation moved from here to here. And you have to master this since it, uh, you know, reduces 11 seconds at level 5. For the rune, uh, you run rage rune because... Rage Rune has a chance to increase your attack speed and movement speed, and you still have a room to increase it. And if the movement speed gets increased, then you get full efficiency of the Rage Captain at that red skill bursting moment. So this would be perfect. For the Awakening, uh, second one is stronger than first one. They both got a damage buff, by the way, but same amount of damage buff, so the second one will still be stronger. For the gems, you run attack gems on 6 DPS skills. Half Moon Slash, Raging Dragon Slash, Thrust of Destruction, Starfall Pounce, Forehead Dragon, and Red Dragon Horn. For the cooldown gem, you run them on Starfall Pounce, Thrust of Destruction, and Red Dragon Horn. For the rest of the two spot, I couldn't, you know, come up with a better, you know, a better option on other skills because I didn't felt the need of it. Like you're gonna see the reason why on the rotation section later on. Okay, now the rotation. Before I go over the rotation, you have to know the crit rate of the each skill. So the crit rate, including the Shackling Blue Dragons, 20% of crit, uh, is 80%, right? Uh, but you're not going to use the Raging Dragon Slash after Shackling Blue Dragon. You're going to use it before that because this skill on the third tripod has 25% crit rate. So that's like 60 plus 25 is 85%, which is already high, right? Like you don't want to over crit this. And also, this is the, the weakest skill out of all six DPS skill. Yeah, there's no point of it. So you want to use the Raging Dragon Slash first as a DPS, you know, uh, rotation, and then Shackling Blue Dragon, and then go for Half Moon Slash, because Half Moon Slash does not have, you know, crit tripod, um, so uh, the crit rate becomes 80% after using the Shackling Blue Dragon, and immediately switch to the Red Stance and use Red Dragon Horn and Starfall Pounce, because these two also does not have you know, crit tripod. So that's also, these two are also 80% if you fit in with Shackling Blue Dragon. But these two right here, Thrust of Destruction 
and the four-headed dragon, they both have 40% crit rate tripod. So 60 plus 40 is 100. So these two already guarantee crits. You do not have to fit in with the uh, Shackling Blue Dragon. Also, another thing that's very important is that the usage of the skills that has Quick Recharge. Quick Recharge is one of the you know key uh, rune in this pinnacle build. By using it, you can reduce the cooldown of other skills, right? And that will, you know, contribute to DPS increase because Pinnacle's uh, skills cooldown are really long. So where are the Quick Recharge? On the Spiraling Spear and also on Raging Dragon Slash. Yeah, the reason why the other one is in Raging Dragon Slash is because combo is a combo attack, right? Where you click two times. And while you're clicking two times, it procs on both. It does, yeah, if you're lucky. And as I told you, Shackling Blue Dragon gives two kinds of buff, right? Uh, one is the self buff, 20% uh, of crit rate for 6 seconds. And the other is Party Synergy, uh, which increases 8% damage upon crit for 16 seconds. So if I use it, then the self buff applies above the HP. You can see it displays here, and the Party Synergy you know, displays on the mob HP. So in the raid, you want to be on the red stance and use Spiraling Spear to get at least one gauge like this. And then swap, use Raging Dragon Slash. And you want to use uh, any other three blue skill like this. And then use Shackling to half Moon Slash. There's a reason why you have to do like this. Like the reason why you have to use three other you know blue skills, anything, before the Shackling Blue rotation. Because of this skill, half Moon Slash. On the second tripod, it... Uh, consumes one gauge to do 96% more damage, right? If you do not use these skills right here, um, then let me tell you, let me show you how what it happens. So you switch, and you do you do raging dragon slash, and then if you use shackling blue dragon, and then half moon slash, you get the damage buff. But if you switch, if you try to switch, it has less than one gauge. So if you switch it, you get no buff. So the red skills becomes slow and does zero damage. You see the reason why. So this, like this rotation, including three blue skills, is you don't have to do it all the time. Only on as an opener. On the beginning, you have to do it. After it, like you don't have to do it because your gauge is gonna be maxed out anyways because you're gonna use like you know all the skills on the red stance. Using three level one blue skills as an opener is also good because you can stack up the adrenaline stats. So it's perfect right before going into the red skills rotation. Okay, so on the red stance, you use Spiraling Spear to get at least one gauge like this. You switch to Raising Dragon Slash, use three blue skills, and then Shackling to Half Moon, and then switch to Red Dragon, Starfall, Thrust, Spiraling Spear, and then Forehead Dragon, and then Spiraling Spear again to proc the Quicker Charge. And if it, the red dragon horn reaches 6 seconds, then you switch to blue stance and keep on going without using those 3 you know, level 1 skills. Like this, see? The, the cooldown seems to be perfect right now. Yeah, as I told you again, using, quick, using the quick recharge 2 times is really good. It's reaching 7 seconds, 6, now you change. Yep, and keep on going. And the cooldown will be back, like this. Keep on using it. And so on and so forth. You use the awakening uh, when all the skills are on cooldown, like now. Yeah. And the reason why you do like this is because awakening's damage is not that strong since you run ambush master. So the awakening damage is actually very similar to the to the red dragon horn. That's the reason why you don't have to you know fit the awakening in shackling blue dragon. You can also run Conviction on Raging Dragon Slash and Judgment on Half Moon Slash. I think this will be a good option since most of the, you know, a West players does not have too quick recharge. So in this case, um, you wanna use Conviction and Shackling Blue to the Judgment like this, and then keep on going. And when you swap back to the Blue Stance, then you have to wait until the cooldown of the other skill comes back and use it. Since you have to proc Conviction Judgment in time. Yeah, so on and so forth. Anyways, that's all for today. And I hope you guys liked this new PTR Pinnacle Claver build. 
and the breakdowns. Until the next video for the control breakdown, stay giga chat and spam noted guys. Bye guys.